As Christians, when people bring up the topic of evangelism, what do you think that means? Well, in my experience, people usually end up in one of two camps. Camp 1 says you need to talk about Jesus and live a life that's consistent with what you believe, and Camp 2 says all you have to do is live a good life. It'll speak for itself. Well, first of all, it's a big jump to assume that anyone can live a good life, don't you think? I mean, Romans 3, 10 through 11 says, none is righteous, no, not one, no one does good, not even one. But that doesn't convince you. In Mark 10, a man comes up to Jesus and kneels down before him and says, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus responds promptly with, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. Now, not only was Jesus subtly claiming to be God here, he's making it pretty clear that nobody is good except for him, hence the no one is good part. But this is the sideshow to the main event, folks, so step right up and let's get down to it. And let's assume when Camp 2 says good life, they just mean if you live a visible godly life, people will, just by watching you, understand all they need to know about God. Okay, let's play that out, shall we? And let's ask Bruce if he can help us. Hey, Bruce, hey. So Bruce grabs a Mormon, a Jehovah's Witness, and a Christian, and he tells you to follow each of those folks around, and after simply watching them, you'll know all you need to know about God. Now, each goes to a place every week and sits among like-minded folks. Each person prays, each treats you with respect, each loves his family, is honest with his money, and is basically a nice person. So. Which God do you pick based on just watching them? Who's right? How do you know? What do you compare unless they tell you why they do what they do? Talking, it seems, becomes critical. No doubt nature reveals much about the invisible attributes of God, but how do you know exactly what he requires of you? I mean, who he really is and what his ultimate plan is without some kind of specific revelation from him? I mean, how would you know if your mother wanted you to paint the left wall of the garage red if it wasn't specifically communicated to you in some way, usually by writing a note or speaking to you? So, what did God deem the best way to communicate the specifics of his will? Did he summon porpoises to do a modern dance? Did he draw word pictures in the clouds? No. To communicate precisely the things he wanted you to know, he intervened throughout history and spoke through men, ultimately moving some of them to write the Bible. That is, he spoke and he wrote a note. How would we know if God created the heavens and the earth in six days? That Adam and Eve were created in a perfect world, but their rebellion brought sin and death into the world? That it's the grace of God through faith in Jesus alone that saves us? How would you know that Jesus died on the cross and resurrected from the grave? How would you know any detail about God and his word and his plan if nobody told us? Well, we wouldn't. We couldn't. And that's why you got to tell people things. You, you just can't hope people will catch on by watching you live a so-called good life life, it's just not enough. Ultimately, you got to tell them why you live that way. But don't just take my word for it, my inquiring Berean band of misfits. Read along in Romans 10. And how can they know who to trust if they haven't heard of the one who can be trusted? And how can they hear if nobody tells them? Jesus himself definitively declares in Matthew 28, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. It's kind of hard to baptize in the name of somebody without actually saying the name. And it's pretty difficult to teach people to observe commandments without telling them what those commandments are, right? I mean, I could go on until my mouth falls off, but suffice to say, Christians are commanded to live a life worthy of the calling, which irrefutably includes things like giving reasons and answers for our hope and engaging in a conversation about Christ. So this idea that you never have to speak out about your faith and all you have to do is live a good life and people will catch on has been debunked. Adios.